Good evening, everyone. Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to your Thursday night update. Before we begin, hit that like button, tap the subscribe button if you can, and of course, tick the little bell to stay updated on all of our content that's coming up soon. A little bit later tonight, I'm filming a little bit on the later side, so we'll keep it nice, short, and sharp tonight. BTC, we'll get straight into it. So, we were looking at our levels here, and I'll uh, explain why I put Gravy Train on in just a moment. So, this level here that we're looking at was our level of demand. We've been looking at this for quite some time, uh, pretty much all week, to be honest with you. And finally, it has come to fruition today where we were looking at this sort of scenario occurring yesterday during yesterday's update, and that's come to light now. We have moved through this level of demand quite confidently, and of course, I'm happy with the retest that I've seen at this level also. So this level is now gone. <clears throat> we've seen gravy train give us the good news around the level of resistance that we're seeing so that cloud structure moving above us now is the most relevant level of resistance and of course that lines up with the previous structure or even the previous clouds there we're observing off gravy train too so lining up nicely with some candle structure, some liquidity to the left-hand side, and of course now we're looking at a gravy train cloud resistance area uh, being in the same sort of area or same sort of positioning for BTC. If we are to see it come up and retest any sort of level, the 50 Fibonacci would be the level that I'm looking for initially or straight away, and that coincides nicely with this liquidity to the left-hand side, which is around the 54K mark. Naturally, the 54,000, the round number area is going to be the area that you want to look at for a bounce or for a rejection to continue the trend to the downside. Just as we saw 57 be the rejection, we are now looking at 54K being the rejection. And if we get a bounce, it will be something along the lines of that. And then, of course, continuing down to our 51,000 area of demand down the bottom there. So that's what I'm looking at for BTC currently. There's not much more to say about it than that. If we do move to the upside and continue to, to break targets to the upside, so if we break back above 54 and above 57, we'll be looking for targets to the upside, but we won't get too ahead of ourselves just yet. But we'll move on. Keep this nice, short and sharp. Ethereum USD. So ETH moving in the direction that we wanted it to. Uh, is very similar in the way of BTC. Like I said to you earlier this week, the areas that we're looking for across BTC, Ethereum, ADA are very similar in nature and it will, they will move pretty much in the same sort of fashion BTC will. Um, but in this instance, we've seen ETH come down to a perfect level at 1560 where we were looking at uh, over the course of the last couple of days. And of course, we've made that red gravy train cloud in the same sort of instance where we're looking at previous areas. Thereabouts where we've got Levels of support, of course, back there in the past, and now we are seeing levels of resistance with liquidity matching up quite nicely to the left-hand side. So looking at that, if we are to see any sort of demand levels uh, or supply, excuse me, supply levels in this instance be created, I'd be looking at something like that, but it is a little bit far away. That's why I'm not adding it in there. It's not really relevant in my opinion. I'd be looking more towards the liquidity areas that we're seeing in the previous uh, section of the chart there and of course our 50 Fibonacci lining up nicely. We are seeing over oversold territory on the steamroller indicator as we did observe with BTC as well. So the same sort of thing to come to fruition with ETH. I don't expect things to continue to the downside um, as fast as we usually would like it to be. It's looking like we uh, the price action is going to take a little bit more time to play out. So looking for upside targets or uh, just areas for a bounce or a recovery or relief, should we set, should we call it that, before a further move to the downside, if we get one. But I'll be looking for confirmation around that 1700 level of resistance. Moving on, the next one I want to look at tonight is LTC USD. Where are we? There we go. LTC, one that I haven't looked at in a little while. And when I say a little while, probably a couple of days, to be honest with you. But we're really sitting in no man's land for LTC. The most relevant level, in my opinion, is still below us at 162. That is the swing or the pivot area here that formed our level of demand at around that area at 162. 
we are getting caught in some of the you know the previous liquidity that we're seeing here so if you're trading ltc and you're looking to average in or dca yourself into the market use a little bit more common sense and of course try and average yourself in and uh, accommodate for a front run. So we might not even get to the 162, even though it is the most relevant level, we need to you know, protect ourselves against that happening. So we might even see something like this occur, where we just get the front run off the front of that level of demand. Next one I'll look at is BNB USDT, and another request that I've had in the Discord this evening. And uh, I haven't charted this in quite some time, so we'll have a look, a good look at this one. There's one there. And of course, there is a small area around this level. Now, they're quite close together, in my opinion. So we could probably get rid of this one and leave the one that coincides very nicely with our level of gravy train cloud there at $225 for Binance Coin. It does have the it does have the momentum to move further downwards, and in my opinion, it can get there. Uh, quite easily from where it is, so it's not too far away. That's the area I'm looking at the extremities of it. And if I'm looking at a more relevant area of Fibonacci to really cover us on this trade, let's have a look. So what I'm looking for in this instance for BNB, I'm looking at swing low to swing high for a retracement on this entire move to the downside. And we are sitting on the 61.8 quite nicely. So that's why we're being held at this spot. And you can see that that liquidity to the left hand side around that 61.8. So if it was me, if I, the play that I would take would be to probably average myself in at this, this instance, and of course get a more substantial buying um, level down there at about that 225 mark, if I had to play this in terms of a DCA uh, strategy. Look, you can, you, can pit, you can hedge your bets against the 78.6 at around that 225, and that's the area that would most speak to me in the way of more relevant zones for, uh, for BNB. Moving on, we'll have a look at the FX chart. So the DXY being a regulated market, this is not financial advice, just ideas and opinions of Team UTG. And I'll take that on the chin. I'm not right every time. Of course, we are wrong at times. So I'll get rid of that. That didn't come to fruition last night. We did relentlessly move through our level of supply again. So now it's time to find a new zone above where we are and to see where we're going to end up next. So the next level that really speaks to me is this one here. This is the next major pivot point. So we've got a pivot here, obviously a pivot there. This is the next one that really speaks to me in terms of price action for the DXY. So we'll scroll across, we'll save what we've got, get rid of the one above it, because this is the one that most matters at 93 points for the DXY. We are looking at a, a you know, an upwards target or an upwards level of that. And we are sitting nicely above the negative 27.2 extension there. There is a, few, a fair bit of liquidity to get through, but it is fairly, you know, it's fairly easy or it's fairly, uh, you know, slippage uh, in terms of the price action that we're dealing with there. So the next level is that 93 mark. We will fluff around for a bit in terms of the target. So swing load high, of course, we could still come back, retrace to our 38.2 before moving to that level. And that's the thing with the DXY, it will respond very well to being over, overbought. And that's what we're observing here. Of course, we observed that in the past and we did have a retrace uh, to really give us that, uh, that overbought condition. So we're seeing that again, and I'm not discounting the fact that we could revisit the 38.50 or the 61 before we see any sort of upward sloping movement again for the DXY. But that concludes our update tonight. Thank you for joining me. I'm Ads from UTG and I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye for now.